He is the director of the Heritage Foundation Center for Health Policy Studies. Dr. Moffitt has been a veteran of Washington policymaking for more than 25 years. In the foundation, he specializes in medical reform, health insurance, and other health policy issues. The Heritage Foundation was founded in 1973. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you today. It's an honor and a privilege to appear before the committee. I should say that the views that I express today are entirely my own uh, and should not be construed as representing the, the views of the Heritage Foundation or its officers or its board of trustees. President uh, Barack Obama has uh, outlined an ambitious and far-reaching health care agenda, including major changes to the Medicare program. I would only observe at the outset that the decision uh, to start with uh, $634 billion worth of financing in a reserve fund without a clear understanding of what exactly it is that would be financed beforehand is at the very least an unusual approach. I would just make two observations in this connection. While the President may believe that there is enough of an agreement to jumpstart the process by putting the money up front and hammering out the details later, it is a common experience in this area of public policy in particular that it is the details that drive the broad policy agenda. It is not always the broad policy agenda that drives the details. And secondly, with funds already committed to the project, there is always the danger that existing stakeholders, the representatives of a very powerful class of special interests that dominate this sector of the economy, will view this entire effort as merely a way to expand existing public and private institutional arrangements with additional taxpayers' dollars, uh, rather than the process of securing a real structural change in the health care system, the creation of different ways of improving the financing and delivery of health care for the 300 million Americans who are going to be the beneficiaries of reform. Um, Altogether, the President is proposing a dozen Medicare-related changes, and in the little limited time available to me, I would like to focus my remarks on just a few key Medicare budget policy proposals. The President wants to change the Medicare Advantage system, and this, will, this change will result in a substantial savings over the first 10 years of its implementation. Uh, he wants to replace the Medicare Advantage payment with a system of competitive bidding. Ladies and gentlemen, much, much would depend on exactly how this legislation is crafted, uh, the details of the process, and what the administration specifically means by competitive bidding. Uh, it is a phrase that can, in fact, have very different meanings. If the process is a way for the government uh, to pick winners and losers among health plans, something akin, for example, to a Department of Defense procurement process, it would be incompatible uh, with uh, personal choice and market competition. It is well to recall that the provision of that opportunity, particularly for seniors in rural areas, was one of the major reasons why Congress enacted the Medicare Advantage program in the first place. If, however, it is a way of establishing a much more rational benchmark for Medicare payment, and allowing uh, persons to pick richer plans and pay for the extra benefits if they wish to do so, or picking less expensive plans and keeping the savings of their choices, the President's proposal could be a significant improvement over the current system. The President is also making, uh, would also make wealthy seniors pay higher premiums for prescription drugs. According to the press reports, the seniors enrolled in Medicare Part D would pay higher premiums just as seniors do in Medicare Part D. Altogether, uh, certainly as an alternative to cutting provider reimbursements, income-relating Medicare subsidies is a sound alternative. The President's position makes a great deal of sense. The President uh, is calling for a reevaluation of the current provider payment systems. That is welcome. He's promoting pay for performance in accordance with government guidelines, tougher enforcement for Medicare payments to doctors and other medical professionals to reduce waste, fraud, and abuse in the system. It should be noted that Medicare savings have previously been proposed as a way to finance comprehensive health care reform. President Clinton proposed that in 1993, uh, promoting a, a shift of approximately $124 billion over six years uh, to finance uh, his health care reform. Um, if the President's changes, however, 
simply result in additional reimbursement reductions at the end of the day. They would aggravate the current level of cost shifting from federal entitlements to individuals and families in the private sector, uh, shifting uh, tens of billions of dollars uh, onto the private sector does not add one red cent to the value of health care in the United States. I am pleased to hear that there's renewed discussion of the current tax policy governing health insurance. Um, this could open up a new opportunity to forge a bipartisan consensus in health care policy. Senator Max Baucus has proposed capping the current tax exclusion on the health insurance, uh, the benefits of health insurance, and creating an opportunity for tax credits or perhaps a voucher program for low-income people to get insurance. This could be the, great, the, the basis of a serious bipartisan cooperation on solving one of the greatest single problems facing the American people. With that, late, uh, with that Madam Chair, Chairwoman, I'm going to uh, conclude my remarks, but I'd be very happy to answer any questions.